Hello and welcome to 100 Days of Summer. I'm Christian Page. Thanks for joining me. So yesterday I started the conversation about results, how important results is and how important is in terms of technology in telling the story, telling us what happened on the field of play. And it's kind of key, um, you know, without it, it's just people doing fitness. So we're not actually recording anything. So it's, it is quite critical and it is key to the audience, depending on the audience and who that audience is. Whether you're watching it on television, through the TV graphics, getting the information, start lists, running times, the actual results. The mobile app, you might be consuming it on that, you might be doing it on an OTT platform, whatever the device, obviously all of this information originates at the field of play and is delivered by the timing scoring systems and the on-venue result systems and then it's diffused and managed to, to be delivered by all the different uh, systems that are in place to make sure that it reaches you as quickly as possible all synchronized with the images and so on and so forth. So quite a lot to get that journey and we've covered some of those topics. I was mentioning yesterday about the team that I had in uh, Rio and how we implemented a project framework, if you like, a project management framework, PMO, and to really help synchronize and, and, and dovetail more into the, the operational fit of an organizing committee. Organizing committees have evolved over the years and on games on games, they get more complex and, and the technology delivery becomes more complex. So, it used, to be more it used to be more simplified and now I think in order to, to facilitate the delivery, and this was certainly some of the learnings from the London Games, we really needed to ensure that we could fit with the organising committee and make sure that the, that the program was delivered effectively and as, as efficiently as possible. And that helps serve all the stakeholders, so good for everybody if we can get all of these things to align and work together well. And in order to do that, I had a fantastic team, but I have, it was a pre, pretty big team. It was, it was around 550 timekeepers in total, uh, plus around 800 volunteers, sports-specific volunteers that would, that would come and work with the results team uh, in doing specific tasks and in and around the field of play and in the OVR for each of the different sports. Um, but the leadership team that I had was amazing. Um, I had around eight different functional areas uh, that we broke the team up into. And leading that, we had timing and scoring, uh, which was led by Hans Gubler and uh, Thomas Kutzka. They were also amazing support for me as we went through this process. Obviously, Hans and Thomas have both got an amazing background in delivering big multi-sport events, and Hans has got an amazing Olympic history, dating back many games before I came on the scene. Uh, so an amazing source of knowledge and experience and uh, were great support and guidance for me uh, delivering the games in Rio. Uh, we also then had OVR, which was led by Marco Pranoi. Marco, again, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the, probably the forefathers, a bit like Hans, in terms of timing and scoring systems working in the industry for, for a long time. I won't give away how many years, uh, but again, an amazing source of, of knowledge and experience, which really helped me in the delivery. Um, and with him, we also had Vladimir Sosin, uh, who was really focused on the program management and, and tracking and monitoring how we were going in the ITL. Uh, the ITL, the Integration Test Lab, is a facility that was last deployed in its full at the Rio Games and essentially it's like a, an office floor with all of the individual cells for each of the sports. So we have all of the computers and all of the, the servers and all of the printers and all of the devices that we need to use, uh, not, not all the timing scoring equipment but obviously all the on-venue result systems so where we can test and make sure that everything is working and, and the, it's going into the information diffusion systems which are supported by Atos. Uh, like I say, complicated, the ITL is a big piece um, and it was a really key piece. I also had a lab back in uh, Corgemont in Switzerland uh, which was led by Christian Saga and again Scott as well. Like I say, these teams are a phenomenal source of um, experience uh, but also to make sure these programs work. But like I say, these are key components in this team and this structure. Implementation, my right hand probably pretty much for, throughout the, the operational delivery, uh, Tom Meyer, uh, great brand and a really uh, valuable uh, team member. He really makes it happen on the ground. Um, and again, his experience in, in ensuring that all of the equipment gets to the right place at the right time, working with all the different sport managers. Uh, he too was based in uh, Rio with me and Marco and Vladimir and a few others of the team. Um, 
I mentioned also yesterday about scoreboards and I talked about LED and the big migration. That was led by Raphael Blanchard. Raphael did an amazing job in, in working with all the different LEDs, understanding all of the engines and testing, improving and making sure that all of this worked and deployed. And we're not just talking about the big public scoreboards, the big ones at either end of the stadium or in and around the field of play. We're talking about the sports specific scoreboards as well. These are the ones that the athletes refer to. These are the ones that give them the information that are specific to their sport. So a lot of devices, a lot of deployment, um, and a lot of integration that has to go on in that whole school board department. Certainly can't deliver this scale of project without some financial controlling, and that was done by Anthony Dutas. And uh, Anthony, again, his first games, and it was wonderful to have him at a key role for me. He did a lot of the contract management and made sure that financially and we kept everything on budget. Uh, obviously working with Sandra back at, at HQ, the CFO, um, wonderful team to have in support. You cannot deliver a project like this without an amazing support in terms of the finance piece. Um, logistics, uh, Victor and uh, Cynthia, uh, wonderful team on site who made it possible that all of the equipment arrived into the right place at the right time in the venues. So when the teams arrived from abroad um, and they started delivering into all of their venues, uh, it was there and they could make it happen. Um, and as we all know, you know, th this last mile is when everything pretty much happens at the same time. Um, huge demand on the logistics team, not only just for games, but they also then have to deliver probably up to 40 different events as test events. So the equipment's coming in and out. Um, they've got a big you know, warehouse facility that they need to run to make sure that the equipment's all safe. Um, again, cannot do it without logistics. Um, I also had travel and services, Elsa and Emmy. Um, the, the, the team that they, they pulled together and the way they were able to ensure that all of the team arrived. Now this is dealing with all the flights, accommodation, transfers, transport, uniforms, you name it. Anything that has to do with getting the logistics of people to a venue on time uh, was their domain and they did a fantastic job. Um, they, again, not without its challenges that we faced in the rear games, but again, also, I have no doubt the same sort of similar challenges we're facing with things like postponement in Tokyo. Um, the travel and services team play an incredibly key role in ensuring that the welfare of the team is well maintained and looked after. Not to mention the PMO. Um, and we built a project management office. And this was also supported by Crystal Grasso um, and myself in helping to build the reporting and structures that enabled us to do live in real time from every venue back to centralized so we could track all of the reporting. Uh, so these are these were my this was my core team, uh, and I, I would dare say that you know this project doesn't happen with any one individual. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday. It really is a phenomenal team that goes to work to make all of this happen. Um, and like I say, I was super proud to have led this team into such a successful delivery as we delivered in Rio. And I have no doubt uh, that the team being led by Jam Oclair in uh, Tokyo, uh, with many of the same, the same team members that I've talked about here today, uh, will do a fantastic job in Tokyo. Really looking forward to seeing them all when we get to Tokyo in next week. Oh no, this week, actually, in a couple of days when I head off. Um, and we'll continue this discussion about our results. If you do have any specific questions, please drop them in the comments or the chat or drop me an email. That I love getting them through and I'll do my best to answer them. And obviously, I can reach out to many of these people to help us uh, answer those questions. So wherever you are, stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye for now.